Pulling into Port Keats is like pulling into a different country. There's a culture that's still alive here that's been running for literally millennia. And it's really interesting to meet the people up close that have been living out here this way for thousands of years and to experience a landscape that's at the heart of their culture firsthand. Port Keats is the white man's name for Wadair, a small Aboriginal community on the northwest fringe of the Northern Territory. Wadair, roughly translated as a place of water, has been a homeland for an eternity. Aboriginals first settled the area as far back as 60,000 years, when much of the Timor Sea was dry land. I met up with my mate John Hayden, who lived in town and knew everyone in the area pretty well. He would help navigate the spaghetti of permissions needed to travel the bush around town and, I hoped, would know a few good fishing spots. This is a rough country though. Nothing's ever easy up here. Uh, there's an adage in fashion that says that if you're comfortable, you're not fashionable. You're gonna be a little bit uncomfortable to look good. I don't know if that's true, but I gotta say, out here, back and beyond, when you're camping, and fishing, and four-wheel driving, there's something to be said for being a little bit uncomfortable because that is the gate that actually holds back the crowds. John had organized permits for at least a dozen different homelands around town. Homelands are basically outstations, a way for people essentially removed from their ancestral lands to go back and try to find some peace with it, try to live on the land again as much as possible. The tracks here are rough, but the D-Max was still taking everything in its stride. About 30 kilometers north of Port Keats is an absolute paradise of a spot called Whitecliff Beach. And you can see why they named it that. Beautiful carved white sandstone sitting under that box site. When the sun starts to go down, I reckon this is a cracker of a spot to have a picnic and a wine. Look at the colors coming out in this place. This spot's also really important to the locals. It's one of their homelands. This is where they come to commune with nature, to try and live like the old fellas did. And you can see why. It's an awesome virgin landscape. There's fish out the front, crabs on the flats. This is the kind of place where you can really feel at one with mother nature. I guess in a way, coming out here, we're doing the same thing. Since Emerson and Thoreau, the Western mind has slowly been digesting the idea of getting back to nature, of trying to grasp our effervescent lost innocence. Our Garden of Eden that we were so inelegantly thrown out of. For the Aboriginal, we were the ones doing the throwing though, and they are only now beginning to make forays back into the overgrown garden of their innocence, looking for clues for how to live again. Look at that beauty on the half shell, fresh out the ocean. This place has so much life in it, you just feel the world tingling below your feet. Mm. This was living the dream. There are no shortcuts in life or philosophy. The best way to inculcate a love for nature is just to go out into it. She'll do all the seducing. You just have to show up and start poking around. You never know what you're going to find out there and in here. One of the coolest things about visiting somewhere so far from civilization is how much life there still is out here. It's a completely virgin landscape. Just walking around the oyster rocks here, flipping over a few stones and there are heaps of muddies out here. Now, this is just a little guy, but I've seen a few bigger ones poking their heads and their claws up through some holes in the rocks. It doesn't look like the kind of place where you'd actually find dinner for the night, but uh, yeah, you can actually survive just off these rocks, off the oysters, the crabs, and the fish that actually get caught in here. Like the Aboriginals, who lived so close to the land right up to a couple of centuries ago, we too have lost an important connection and a degree of knowledge that we're slowly gaining back through science and adventures. The moment you buy a four-wheel drive, you've made a decision which is going to change your life. But like Thoreau heading out to Walden Pond to live for a year, we don't so much learn that wildness is a tonic. 
We knew it from the beginning. 